everyone, how's it going? My name is Monica and welcome to my channel for another step-by-step -step sewing tutorial. And I really hope these sewing tutorials help inspire you to keep creating during these difficult times. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a wrap maxi skirt, which is a really fun, just really beautiful piece to make, and it's a lot of fun to wear. So I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. Let's get sewing. To make this project, you'll need at least two and a half yards of a light to medium weight non-stretch fabric. I used this beautiful lightweight flowy fabric here. And you'll also need the sewing supplies I have listed in the video's description, so make sure to check that out before you start so you have everything you need. To get started, we have to cut out a large rectangle of fabric that we'll use for the main part of the skirt. To do that, you'll need to cut out a piece of fabric that's wide enough to wrap around you about two times, which you can see here, and that size worked perfectly for the skirt. Then for the length, cut your rectangle about an inch longer than you want the skirt to be, and that adds the room we need for hem and seam allowance. And as a reference, my rectangle was about 77 inches wide by 45 inches long. Next, we have to hem both sides of the rectangle, and I've zoomed in closer to one side here so you can see better. Turn the fabric so the wrong side is facing up and fold the edge over about a quarter of an inch, then fold it again another quarter inch so the raw edge is no longer visible and pin it down. Double fold the next section a quarter inch at a time and pin it down too, and continue doing this all the way along the side of the skirt ironing if needed to help the fabric stay in place. When you're done pinning, sew to secure the hem using a standard needle and a straight stitch for all the steps in this tutorial, and always backstitch at the beginning and end to secure the seams unless I mention otherwise. Press the hem with an iron using the heat instructions for your fabric type, and now you have a nice neat hem on one side. Go to the opposite side and hem it the same way by double folding the fabric, pinning, and sewing it down, and now both sides should be finished neatly. Next, we have to gather the fabric along the top edge of the rectangle to give the skirt the fullness and shape that it needs, and to do this we'll be sewing basting stitches along the top. Basting stitches are long straight stitches that make it easy to gather fabric, and to sew them, you'll need to change the stitch length on your machine to the longest length possible. Mine went up to 4.8. Pull several inches of the thread and bobbin out so that you have a long tail of thread at the beginning of your seam, and then begin sewing with about a quarter inch seam allowance. And it's very important that you don't backstitch at the beginning or end for this step. When you get to the end, again pull several inches of thread out before cutting it, and then repeat that process one more time by sewing a second row of basting stitches next to the first. And now you'll have two long rows of stitches along the top of the skirt. Grab the bottom bobbin threads from both sets of stitches and begin sliding the fabric across the seams so that the skirt starts gathering together. Be really careful as you do this so you don't pull on the thread too hard and break it, although if one does break, don't panic. We sewed two rows of stitches just in case one does break. Continue gathering the fabric evenly across the top so that that top edge gets smaller and smaller, and this is what will become the waist of the skirt. Your goal is to gather it enough so that you'll be able to wrap the skirt around you and overlap it by several inches on the front, adjusting it so that you have the coverage that you're comfortable with. When you get it adjusted how you want, tie the threads together on both sides of the rectangle so that the skirt's size doesn't keep shifting around, then lay it back onto your table. To make the waistband, measure across the top edge of your skirt and then add 1 inch to your measurement for seam allowance. Mine was 42 inches wide, so I got 43 inches. Cut out a rectangle that measures the number you just got long by 5 inches wide and flip it over so the wrong side faces up. Fold both short ends over a half inch each and press them both with an iron so they stay in place. Lay both the skirt and the waistband with the wrong sides facing up and make sure that the skirt's gathers are distributed evenly along the top. Place the waistband onto the skirt so that the top edges and sides line up 
and begin pinning the pieces together along that top edge, pinning every few inches as you go. Then when you finish pinning, sew to attach them using a half inch seam allowance and make sure to change your stitch length back to normal so you're not sewing a basting stitch anymore. Bring the waistband up above the skirt and turn it all over so now the correct side of your skirt is facing up. Then fold the top edge of the waistband down about a half inch and press it with an iron so it stays in place. I'm zooming in so you can see better here and you'll need to trim any thread hanging off before the next steps. Fold the waistband down in half so that it sits a little below the seams you sewed and it covers up all those stitches and basting stitches completely and pin it down. Then fold and pin the next section down too, again making sure it covers up all the stitches so that they're no longer visible, and repeat that process all the way along the top edge of the skirt pinning frequently to keep the waistband in place. When you finish pinning, sew to secure it to the front of the skirt by sewing about an eighth of an inch away from this folded edge, and take your time as you sew so you get a nice clean line of stitches on the waistband. Then press it with an iron for neatness, and now it's time to work on the ties. To make them, I cut out two strips of fabric that were about 50 inches long by 3 inches wide. I do wind up trimming them down some later because they were a bit too long, but I still suggest cutting them long like I did just to be on the safe side because it's super easy to trim them down if needed. Fold them in half with the correct sides of the fabrics facing together and pin them all the way along the length of the ties. Then sew along the long edge and one short edge of each of them. Use something long and thin like this rounded end of a paintbrush to turn the ties right side out by pushing the end of the fabric through the tube, and when you're done, iron them both flat. Grab your skirt and open up the very end of the waistband, which as you can see has not been sewn closed yet. Slide the raw end of the tie inside of it about a half inch, Pin it down, and sew back and forth over the edge of the waistband to secure the tie. Then go to the opposite side and sew that tie on the same way. To be able to tie the skirt, we have to make a buttonhole on one side of the waistband to feed the tie through, and if you've never made one, don't be intimidated. With a little practice, they're actually pretty easy. To see where to make the buttonhole, wrap the skirt around you and go to the side of your waist just past where the bottom layer of the skirt ends and use a straight pin to mark this point. Lay the end of your tie down next to the pin to see how big the buttonhole needs to be and draw a vertical line that size using chalk or another erasable marking tool. Remove the pin and draw a small line on the top and bottom of that vertical line so your marking looks like a capital I, and this marks where we'll sew. Now the actual process of sewing buttonholes varies from machine to machine, so you will need to look at your machine's manual for the exact instructions on how to sew one with your machine. The machine I'm using is a Singer Stylist, which is an electronic machine that has a one-step buttonhole system, and it was super easy to use. I simply had to put the buttonhole foot on, set it up for the size buttonhole I wanted, which is the size of the marking, and then start sewing, and the machine did all the work automatically. I know it's hard to see what's happening here because this machine has an LED light in it which is really hard to film, but I did make a buttonhole on another style wrap skirt tutorial last year that you can see much more clearly, so I'll link that video in the description box in case you want to check it out. The machine I used then had a four step buttonhole system on it, so the process was a bit different than this one and I walk you through it in that video, so it might be helpful. I definitely recommend practicing a few times on a scrap of your fabric before starting on your actual skirt, and if you're using a super lightweight fabric, I'd also recommend placing a small piece of interfacing on the back of the waistband before you sew the buttonhole on, and that'll give the fabric more stability as you sew. One more thing I wanted to tell you here was that when I first started sewing the buttonhole on, my fabric got caught in the machine and it made a mark. I just changed my needle and the needle actually came loose so I didn't have it in good enough I guess, and luckily it's not noticeable when I wear the skirt, but I did want to point that out. 
Now to cut the buttonhole open, use a sharp seam ripper and start just underneath the top post of stitches to cut the fabric, being careful not to cut any of the stitches. When you get about halfway down, start from the other side to cut the rest of it open, and now you have a place to feed your tie through. To hem the bottom edge, lay it with the wrong side up and double fold the fabric a quarter inch at a time, then sew it down and iron it just like we did on the sides. To tie the skirt, wrap it around you and feed the tie from the bottom layer through the buttonhole and pull it tight. Then wrap the front of the skirt around you too and tie the ties into a bow on your side. As you can see, my ties were really long, so I cut them down shorter, then hem the raw edges by double folding them and sewing them down. And now your skirt is ready to wear. Thank y'all so much for watching and stay safe. You two keep creating. Whoa! Okay, never mind. Step by step sewing tutorial. Okay, that's not gonna work. I tried. Oh, wait, I forgot to put it on other setting. It's gonna cut off.